G'day guys, this is Tier, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 guide. Today we will be discussing in depth every single mutation and what sets of mutations work best to complement specific playstyles and builds. If you're brand new to Fallout 76, then this video will be a perfect stepping stone for you to grasp an idea of how you should build and define the perfect build or character for your preferred playstyle. That is, of course, if you are trying to min-max towards something incredibly specific. You could always just go all gun ho and equip all mutations in the game at the exact same time. But that would be very counterintuitive and not very effective. And here at my channel, we don't roll that way. Anyways, before we go ahead with this video, I would like to just thank each and every one of you that do watch my videos. We are getting really, really close to 10,000 subscribers, and I'm actually really excited for this. I never thought I'd get 100 subscribers, let alone where I am at the moment. Also, I'd like to quickly experiment with my video structure and thank my channel supporters and harbingers at the start of the video. Since most of my viewers don't even know I do this or that this is a thing I do on my channel. So yes, if your name is on screen right now, then you are a fucking true blue absolute legend. You are a channel supporter or harbinger and we've actually got a few new ones. We've got Spindleshanks, we've got F Facket, Neo Lux, Xander Attacks, George Deval, and Natalie. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel, it means the world. Also guys, be sure to let me know in the comments down below if I should continue having this section here at the end of the video or move it to the front. I'd like to know. Anyways, moving on to the actual video. <laughs> also, I will not be explaining how to get mutations or the best places to get them. Plenty of other people have done those guides. If you need them, feel free to search them up. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So, there are a lot of mutations that this game has to offer, and I will go in depth over how they synergize for proper character builds, and what combinations are best for which builds for min-maxing in a moment. But for right now, let's very quickly go over them all individually, in order, and talk about what they do, and what they are good for. But of course, if you already know what all of these mutations do, then feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp on screen right now, where I specifically go over what mutations should be used for what builds. Firstly, we have Adrenal Reaction, which is absolutely amazing for bloodied, low health or even half health builds, as it actually gives you a slight damage increase the lower your health drops. In terms of actual numbers, this mutation will give you about a 6% damage increase per 10% of your health that is lost, capping out at a 50% extra damage increase once you are below 20% of your maximum health, which is Nerd Rage. The downside is that it literally takes away 50 health points from your total health point count, which in all honesty isn't a huge negative unless you're PvPing or in another situation where every point of health severely matters. As I said, this is essential for bloodied, low health builds of any kind, be that melee, ranged, or whatever. This is not viable if you plan on staying at full health. And side note, it does increase the damage of all weapon types, even if that weapon is not bloodied. So, yeah. Next up we have Bird Bones. Now this mutation grants a plus 4 to your agility and also the ability to fall 50% slower, which in turn literally reduces your fall damage in game, the downside being a minus 4 towards your strength. Clearly this is a great mutation for all ranged builds, be that pistols, rifles, or even heavy weapon pair armor builds, but it should not be used on melee builds due to the negative of strength. You could probably make it work, but a minus 4 to strength equals all up a 20% minus to melee damage output. So yeah, that is not advisable. Anyways. Next up is an interesting one. This one actually got a recent buff, which is pretty cool. This is the Carnivore Mutation. Basically, this essentially allows you to eat all raw meat without any worry for diseases. It also doubles the hunger satiation of all meat-related food being eaten. And on top of that, any bonuses your meat food happens to give you is also now doubled. For example, without this mutation, if you eat a Deathclaw steak, it would normally give you a plus 2 towards your strength. But with Carnivore, it will now give you a plus 4 towards your strength. And this is also true with every other meat-based consumable in the game, with bonuses. Whatever bonuses they give is now doubled with the Carnivore mutation. The downside is that you cannot consume vegetables or fruit-based food items in the game. They will give no bonuses whatsoever and no food satiation. Basically, use this on every build, but it's specifically amazing for melee builds because of all the food that benefits melee damage. But yeah, unless you specifically want herbivore, then it's all up to personal preference, honestly. Moving on to Chameleon. 
This mutation allows the player to be completely invisible while standing still and not moving. But the downsides are you have to be completely naked or wearing a very rare full set of some weightless legendary armor pieces. But whilst you are invisible and it is active, you are given a slight damage resistance increase. The negative for all of this obviously is you have to be naked with no armor for it to work completely. This mutation would be great in theory for a stealth sniper that uses Berserker's legendary weapons, for example, but in actual practice it's not that great. I do however use it on all of my characters just in case I do decide to get naked, as it actually has no actual inherent negative effects whatsoever. It's just kind of there for the novelty, and the negatives being you have to make the choice to become completely armorless and naked. So yeah, it's just kind of there. Use it if you must. And then we have the Eagle Eyes mutation, which increases your critical hit damage by 25%, and increases your perception by a further 4. The negative being a minus to 4 for your strength. Clearly this is an amazing perk for ranged builds like riflemen's, commandos, pistol builds, shotgun builds, basically all range builds that use VATS predominantly. I do not recommend however using this on heavy builds because VATS is not all that viable for them. And I think it goes without saying that this has no melee implications since it literally takes away our strength which means removing our melee bonus damage and we can't really benefit from the critical bonus hit damage that it does offer. Next up is the Egghead mutation, which coincidentally enough increases your intelligence by 6 points. But the negatives to being a big old nerd is a massive hit to your strength and endurance, that being a minus 3. Now this mutation is a tricky one. It's clearly not intended to be a combat related mutation, that's why you'll never see me use it in any of my builds. But having said that, this mutation is definitely amazing to help you level up faster and craft better armor or weapons because having higher intelligence directly affects those two properties. In short, do not use this if you're combat orientated, it will only hinder you. But do use it if you are doing something super specific like grinding up levels faster. Electrically Charged is the next mutation on the list, which grants a 40% chance to inflict an electrical explosion upon your melee attackers. The damage it inflicts isn't much and its only negative is that it inflicts a portion of said damage onto the player also. This mutation has potential to be great in a lot of builds but I have to say it should never be used for bloodied builds. I find that it would proc too often and its backlash damage would end up actually killing me when I was way too low of health. So in short I highly recommend this mutation for high health builds of any kind, not so much low health build ones like bloodied. It is a great mutation, but you just have to pick and choose which builds to use it on. Next up is the Empath mutation. This one's super specific because of the fact that it actually makes your teammates take 25% less damage from all damage sources, which is awesome, but it has a huge negative effect in that it, you yourself will take 33% more damage from all sources of damage. In the clip here, the person on my team is running the mutation, that's why I'm taking so little damage. Yeah, like I said, it's a pretty specific mutation. I do not recommend running this if you play solo, obviously, but if you are focused on PvP related content in this game or you yourself are a medic slash support type of character, then this mutation is amazing for you. I won't go into specifics, but the mutation does stack if everyone on a team has the mutation on at the same time, leading to some pretty tanky fuckers. The Grounded Mutation is next up on the list. This one is pretty hit or miss in my opinion. It basically grants up to 100 energy resistance. In turn for the negative effect being, you now do literally half as much of damage with all energy related ranged weapons. Obviously if you are a melee character this doesn't affect you in the slightest, so it's a great mutation for them. But it is also a great mutation if you don't ever plan on using energy weapons in the first place. Clearly this one's kind of self explanatory for whether or not you should use it. If you use energy weapons, definitely don't use this because you'll be doing half of the amount of damage. But if you don't, it's just free <laughs> energy resistance, so go for it. Next up is the Healing Factor mutation, which grants you a 300% faster healing regeneration ability. Now this obviously sounds good on paper, but the downside being this only works while you are outside of combat, and it also reduces all effectiveness of all chems by 55% meaning a stim pack will heal you for half the normal amount, a psyker will give you half the amount of damage bonus effects, etc etc etc. This is a god awful mutation, trust me. 
It is just plain and simple bad. Do not use this ever, but if you do and want to give it a shot and try to make it work, I recommend trying to use it for a sniper rifle class of build. So that way you're constantly out of combat and technically healing by it. Now we have the herbivore mutation. This is the exact same as the carnivore except it is the polar opposite and only works for fruit or vegetables. Like carnivore though, this has also got a buff. So for example, if you eat a blight soup, instead of the regular 20% critical damage increase, you now gain a 40% critical damage increase. Like carnivore also, this is good for all builds, it's really just up to personal preference. But I do recommend this for all sniper slash commando builds, if you are really looking to get the most out of your consumable bonuses for that build. Moving on to herd mentality, this mutation includes a plus 2 towards all of your special stats while you are in a team, the negatives obviously being a minus 2 towards all special stats while you are solo and alone. This is obviously amazing for all builds, melee, shotgun, sniper, pistol, doesn't matter, but only if you are in a team. So obviously it is not good if you are going to be using it completely alone. This is amazing for all builds assuming you're going to be running it in a team. Clearly it is not good for lone wanderers, do not use it if you play alone. Oh fuck yeah, up next is my personal favourite, the marsupial mutation. This bad boy is amazing, it grants the ability to jump literally two times as high as normal, leading to so many combat and tactical opportunities. It also increases your total carry capacity by 20 points, the negatives to it being a minus 4 to intelligence. Obviously this perk is amazing and should be used in all builds, melee, riflemen, heavy weapons, shotguns and pistols. Unless of course you specifically don't like this mutation for whatever reason and don't want to jump high and don't want to have more carry capacity. I mean it's a no-brainer. This mutation is amazing and literally has no downsides in my opinion. We don't need intelligence. Who cares? <laughs> Next up is Plague Walker. This mutation basically adds an area of effect poison aura around your character to hurt your enemies. The kicker being obviously you have to be diseased for this to become active. It starts off at 5 poison damage per second if you have 1 disease, and caps out at 25 poison damage per second if you have 4 diseases. In all honesty, I think this mutation is amazing and has no downsides. It should be used on every build in my opinion, and here's why. By default, it has no negative effects at all. The negative is the diseases you contract in the world. But obviously you can't control when you get diseases, so you might as well use them to your advantage in combat for when you do accidentally get them. It's a bit of a balancing act, but like I said, you can't control when you get diseases, so let's use them to our advantage. The Scaly Skin Mutation is up next. This one grants you a plus 50 to both your damage and energy resistance stats, the downside being a minus 50 towards your total amount of possible AP, or action points. Meaning if you had 300 AP points, you now have a total of 250 AP points for use. In my opinion, this perk is best suited for builds that don't use VATs, so this should be used for melee, maybe shotguns, maybe heavy gun builds, or just tanky builds in general that don't care about AP. But in my opinion, if you care about mid maxing towards specific playstyles, this should not be used for any rifle or commando or pistol type builds that do use AP regularly, because that 50 AP drain is a lot when it comes to VATs usage. Moving on to the Speed Demon mutation now. Fuck, this list is taking forever. <laughs> this mutation is genuinely amazing. It offers you a 20% faster reload increase with all weapons, and it completely maxes out your movement speed. So obviously this doesn't stack with perks like Gunrunner or Squad Maneuvers, or anything like that that increases movement speed, since you're already at the maximum movement speed possible. The negative for this being that while you are running or walking, you drain your thirst and hunger bar by 50% faster, which honestly, I'm okay with. This mutation is amazing and totally worth it for any build. Although this is best suited for the melee builds in my opinion, but it should be used in all builds on all characters. Let's be honest, you can't say no to faster reload speed and faster movement speed. Next up is the Talons mutation. Clearly this is a no-brainer and only should be used on all melee builds. It basically increases all unarmed damage by 25% and adds a small bleed over time effect to all unarmed attacks. The negative being a minus 4 to agility, which honestly is totally worth the trade-off if you're doing an unarmed slash melee build. In case I didn't make it clear, do not use this mutation on any ranged based orientated builds. It does not benefit them. 
Clearly this is amazing for all unarmed brawler slash melee builds, it's amazing, has no hindrances at all. The minus 4 to agility is totally worth the trade off. Very closely related we have the Twisted Muscles mutation. This increases all melee damage by a further 25% and adds a chance to cripple limbs that you attack, the negative being a huge hit to gun accuracy, 50% to be exact. This will make aiming with all weapons literally twice as harder than before. So I don't think I need to say it, but I will anyway. Only use this mutation on melee slash unarmed focused builds. Definitely don't use it on any range builds, it literally makes you 50% more inaccurate with your shots. Has no benefit towards it. Just focus it on melee, use it for melee. <laughs> and lastly we have the unstable isotope mutation, which is basically the same as the electrically charged mutation, but with a slight twist. This gives a 10% chance to blast melee attackers with a small amount of damage and radiation, the negative clearly being that it also inflicts some of that damage onto you. Obviously this is not recommended for bloodied builds since you may kill yourself by accident, but if you are full health build then go for it, I don't see why not. It's basically the same recommendations as the electrically charged one, it's just slightly different. Phew, and we are back. If you skipped ahead, I basically just went over all of the mutations in the game and gave key info for what builds they should be used for. If you're a new player, I recommend going back and watching. Seriously. <laughs> and just quickly, I would like to mention two perks that are amazing in combination with mutations. Firstly, the perk called Stranger Numbers will literally increase the positive effects of all of the previously mentioned mutations. But only if you're on a team with a fellow mutant. And lastly, the perk known as Class Freak. This will literally decrease the negative effects of all mutations by 75% at max rank, but in my opinion Class Freak is completely useless. If you build your mutation setup properly, you will never have to worry about the negative effects since they won't matter, but only if you build it properly. Anyways, let's get into the mutation and builds synergy section. So the following section is just purely my opinion for what works best for each type of build with each weapon class variation. Keep in mind all of the following builds are built specifically for a playstyle or purpose. Let's get into it. Okay, let's start with melee. Personally, this build is best used with bloodied. I go over this in detail in an actual build video. If you'd like to watch that or any of my other builds that I have created, then there is a selection playlist that will be linked in the top right right now. And disclaimer, all of my builds are personally bloodied, so just ignore the adrenal reaction part for if bloodied is not your cup of tea. But anyways guys, for melee I highly recommend the following mutation class setup. Adrenal Reaction, Carnival, Grounded, Marsupial, Plague Walker, Scaly Skin, Speed Demon, Talons, and Twisted Muscles. Literally all of these perks have no negative effects on us because we are a melee character. We don't give a fuck if we lose intelligence, perception, or any AP. We don't need it. We just need to make sure that we have the highest amount of defense, movement speed, and strength as possible which is what this combination offers. There's nothing here that removes strength, only mutations that directly complement the melee playstyle. Obviously you could fine tune this combination if you don't use bloodied or if you prefer something in place of something else, but this is just my personal preference. Next up is the Rifleman slash Commando build. I'll mention one last time that all of these directly complement the playstyle and build. Obviously in this case it is Vats, Sneak and Gunplay. The following mutation combination is what I recommend for these builds. Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Chameleon, Eagle Eyes, Plague Walker, Herbivore, Marsupial, and Speed Demon. Notice how we only have mutations that directly increase our perception and agility. Whilst now in this case it doesn't matter to us if we take mutations that remove our strength, that doesn't matter for this type of build. Only agility does for sneak, perception for accuracy, and luck for VAT's critical meters. We also don't have anything that might give us some damage resistance as the negatives to those particular ones aren't worth the trade off for this particular specific VATS orientated playstyle. Again you could customise and do whatever you want, I'm just giving you the building blocks towards an amazing min maxed stealth commando or rifleman build. For a build like this you will need to sacrifice your survivability and defence to have so much stopping power and damage output. Also with a build that is particularly focused on sneak, defense shouldn't matter since we will never be detected in the first place and therefore never needing to take any damage. Also this is the only build where I recommend that you use herbivore instead of carnivore, mainly because there's a lot of vegetable consumables that benefit the rifleman playstyle, like massive increases to VAT's critical hit damage and buffs to perception. Anyways, 
The next one is very similar except stealth isn't as big of a priority. This is the pistol slash gorilla build. Now I've centered this build around the run and gun ideology, meaning a lot of vats and AP usage. Agility is very much so the main attribute for this build. The mutation combination for the pistol builds are Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Carnivore, Eagle Eyes, Plague Walker, Electrically Charged, Marsupial, and Speed Demon. This is pretty similar to the Rifleman setup, but with more emphasis on the agility and AP for running and gunning. If you've ever played as a gun Zerker on Borderlands 2, it's pretty much like that. Tanky, constantly moving, and a lot of damage output for such a small weapon. Like I said, I personally run this build to be a bit more tanky than normal, and since we are using pistols, it is good to use Electrically Charged for when we do get swarmed. For example, if you are surrounded by ghouls at Y Springs, it's a huge help. But yes, the mutations here 100% benefit the run and gun pistol playstyle. We have nothing here that negatively affects anything we primarily need, like perception, agility, luck, or AP. Like I said, it's all about sacrificing certain points of your character that aren't your primary attributes to then bolster your actual primary attributes. Once you find that sweet spot for your specific build, weapons, armor, and mutations, you'll be an unstoppable monster. Moving on to my heavy weapon pair armor build, this is a totally different playstyle altogether. Personally, I built this around the aspect of being as tanky as humanly possible, whilst also dealing as much damage output as humanly possible, which fits the nature of a power armor wearing heavy gun totem badass. The mutations I recommend for heavy builds are Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Carnivore, Eagle Eyes if you're using something like a Gatling Gun, Marsupial, Plague Walker, Scaly Skin, Speed Demon, and Unstable Isotope. And these again all very clearly benefit the power armor tank slash heavy damage output class. If you guys didn't know, it's very rare to have a heavy weapon that is viable in VATS, so 99% of the time I personally build these heavy gun types of characters with that in mind. We have all the damage resistance mutations except for Grounded since I personally use energy weapons, so that negatives is not worth it for me. However, it may be for you. But like always, you can customize this to your liking. This is just a framework. Although there are no mutations that directly affect or add anything for heavy weapons and power armor in this game, the ones here that I have chosen definitely do help with this main role, extreme tanking and overclocked damage output. Now onto the shotgun build mutations. This one is kind of like a mix of the pistol build and the heavy builds mutation wise. It's tanky and does have the ability to use vats effectively and simultaneously be a run and gun free aim playstyle. So perception, agility and luck are very important as always with these ranged mutation build setups. But the mutation setup for this is Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Carnivore, Chameleon, Eagle Eyes, Grounded, Marsupial, Plague Walker, Scaly Skin and Speed Demon. This build is very versatile and very effective when you get the Gorse Shotgun and Combat Shotgun at least. But the reasons for everything is fairly self-explanatory, but to explain a few things. Number one, why I have grounded is because there are literally no energy shotguns in the game. The Gorse shotgun counts as a ballistic shotgun, even though it uses energy weapon ammo, and the Tesla shotgun, the scattered plasma rifle, the scattered laser rifle, all count as rifles, not shotguns. So it's got no downside. But every other mutation specifically fuels and benefits the shotgun playstyle and build. Specifically Eagle Eyes if you want to be vatsing, you can be. Speed Demon for the quick shotgun reloads. And nothing else here actually negatively affects our main attributes. Perception, Agility and Luck. The three main ones for all ranged builds. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the video. A complete explanation and guide to every mutation, including which mutations should be used for what context, builds and playstyles. Some of you may disagree with me, which is completely fine. This is just a framework for the newer players of Fallout 76. Who knows, it may even help out some of the older players as well. I do hope this video helped out a lot of you. As always, links to my social media and Discord are going to be down below in the description. Please be sure to follow me and join up, I'd love to have you. Thanks for watching, I've been Tia, and welcome to Valhalla.